Hi guys, in this video we're going to complete the square in question 8 and then in question 9 and 10 we're actually going to start solving these quadratic equations where we have an equal sign and we can get solutions for, for our, our unknowns. So feel free to skip to the question you're after, shown in red. Question 8, and we are going to complete the square. Now, completing the square is a technique of factorising. Now, in the first, I think, seven questions in this video, we've, we've done some factorising using the Fox family method. But this time, completing the square turns it, its, its factorised form into a little bit different than normal brackets. And it's a, it's a form that can be used later on in maths uh, quite quite well to see what functions and see what it looks like. So let's go ahead and complete the square with these two equations. Now this is my technique of doing it, so if you don't know how to complete the square, just follow my steps. Okay, I want to start with a bracket. Now, whatever this pronumeral is, which is usually an x, we put that in. Not x squared, we just put the, the pronumeral itself. And we take down whatever sign this is, plus and the last thing in this bracket is half of this number. So this is a 4, half of that number is 2, close bracket, and then put a squared sign. And that's the hardest part done. All we did, bracket, put this pronumeral, we, we kept the sign, and then half of this number, close the bracket squared. Now, what's left? Well, we have this plus 1 still, but we can't forget about this. And the last thing we have to do, it's always a minus sign, and it's this number squared. So 2 squared is just 4. And that's it. We can just tidy it up and we have our answer. We go x plus 2 squared and 1 minus 4 is minus 3. And there's our answer. We have completed the square. So it wasn't too hard. It was just a few steps and uh, works every time. Okay, let's have a look at the second question here. Now this time we can't go straight ahead and, and do the, the really simple method because this method relies on uh, the coefficient of the x squared, the number in front, being 1. But over here it's 3. So sometimes I look at the question first and see if I can do something with it. Now notice here there is a common factor in all of these three terms. There is 3x squared plus 9x plus 3. Now x isn't common, but there's a number. 3 is common in 3, 9 and 3. So if we have a common uh, number in all of these, we can take it out the front by factorising it. Now what's left? Well, 3 times what will give 3x squared? Well, just x squared. 3 times what will give 9x? Well, this will be 3x. And 3 times 1 will be 3. So, firstly, we factorise it just to get this, this ugly coefficient back down to 1. And now, we can complete the square just with this bracket, and we'll, we'll put the 3 in at the end. Okay, let's use our completing the square technique. I'm just going to put the 3 in a big bracket at the start, and we can, we can sort of forget about that for now. Okay, bracket. This letter, we keep the sign, and it's half of this number. Now, half of 3 is just going to be 3 over 2. We close the bracket and put a squared sign. That's the hard part done. Now we have to keep whatever's left, so plus 1, and it's always minus this number squared. So this is a little bit of a tricky one with fractions, but I wanted to put it in because sometimes quadratics have fractions. And 9 over 2 squared, well, you just square top and bottom. So it's going to be 9 over 4. And because we have to times it by 3, everything we've done here, we'll just close the bracket. Okay, let's do a little bit of tidying just to get our final answer. Well, it's going to be 3, big bracket. Okay, we'll go x plus 3 over 2 squared. Now, we're going to have to do a little bit of a subtraction of fractions here. I'm going to rewrite, rewrite 1 as 4 over 4 just so I can uh, subtract this fraction here. Because 4 over 4 minus 9 over 4 will give us negative 5 over 4. Right? So that we can change this now to minus 5 over 4. And I'll just rub this out, just for our reference. And if we put here one more step to, to complete this answer, 
was times 3 by everything here. So 3x plus 3 on 2 squared and 3 times 5 on 4 will just be 15 on 4. And there is our answer when we complete these two, complete the squares. Question 9. Now, we're going to use our factorising techniques to solve for x now. Okay, so, what is common in both of these terms here? Well, x is common, so I want to put it out here. Let's go x, bracket. Now, x times what will give us x squared? It will give us x. And x times what will give us minus 4x? Well, just minus 4. Pretty self-explanatory. So we have x bracket, x minus 4 bracket equals 0. We have x multiplied by this bracket equals 0. So we want to know what x is. And, and actually, x might have multiple answers here. And let's, let's sort of have a look why. Well, if x is 0, okay, if we say x is 0, well then, I'm just going to put this in red, just, just for, our, for our interest sake here. 0 times by, well, 0 minus 4, we minus 4. That would be 0 times minus 4 is 0. And 0 does equal 0. So, x equals 0 is actually a solution. But it's not the only solution, though. Okay? Now, this is actually a technique that you might have seen in a textbook called, I'm pretty sure it's called the null factor law, where there's actually multiple uh, answers for x by making either this or this equal to zero. Because if it's equal to zero, if you multiply it by the other term, you'll get zero. Okay, so just bear with me here if you're a little bit confused. Do we know of x equals zero? Zero times this bracket will be zero. But also, if we want to make this bracket here equal to zero, so then this bracket multiplied by this will also be zero. So I want to go x minus four, we want to be 0. And then we'll get x equals, we can move the, the negative 4, or add 4 to both sides, x equals 4. And notice if we, if we substitute in x equals 4 in, well, 4 times 4 minus 4 is 4 times 0. And that's going to be 0. So there's actually two answers here. And uh, sometimes, we'll actually fill it on in maths, so you're going to start getting multiple answers for x. But uh, let's have a look at this question here now. Okay, we have 5x squared equals 20. So let's divide by both sides by 5. So we're left with x squared equals... Now, 20 divided by 5 is 4. Now, we want to find what x is here. So the way you normally do this is just go x equals the square root of 4. Now, the square root of 4, you might be thinking it's 2, but it's also negative 2. Because if we substitute this back in here, well, 2 squared is 4, because 2 times 2 is 4. But if we substitute in negative 2, well, negative 2 squared, which is negative 2 times negative 2, is also 4. So notice here, we have two answers for x again. And this is actually a very common thing, which you might already know. But if you ever have x squared equals something, the square root will be plus or minus, or here we go, I'm going to write this as plus or minus 2 as our answer, x equals. That's probably more mathematically correct. But notice in these sort of questions, we're starting to maybe get two answers for x. Question 10. Now we're getting into some serious maths. But actually, the techniques we, we uh, need to use to solve this, we actually already know in previous videos. So if you're up to date with our videos, yeah, this should be a bit of a breeze. But notice here, only x is the unknown. We're actually trying to solve for x now because we have an equal sign. But you can't, like other times where we just have x, maybe put stuff on the other side and then just hopefully x just reveals itself because it looks like that's not going to be able to happen. Now, the reason why we always tell you in earlier videos we need to factorise, factorise, because factorise actually gets us into a form which we can very easily solve for x. So... First thing first, I'm going to factorise this, and what better way do you factorise by using the Fox family method, uh, the foolproof Fox family method, okay? Remember the Fox family method, AX squared plus BX plus C, and this is the form for a general quadratic equation here, so if we use that, 
Our A is going to be 1, a number in front of the x squared. Our B is going to be 3. Our C is going to be 2. Now with this, we need to draw up our little, our little technique, Fox family technique. Alrighty, does that fit in the screen? Yep. Okay, this is going to be A times C in this box here. We put line out, line out, another box here, and this is B. And times plus, and we can go ahead and do the Fox family method. So A times C is 1 times 2, so it's just 2. And B is 3. So, the Fox family method requires us to get two numbers, here and here, that multiply to give 2, but add to give 3. Well, this is a pretty easy one, because 2 and 1. 2 times 1 equals 2, but 2 plus 1 equals 3. So, from that, we can go, because our prime numeral is x, we go x plus 2, x plus 1. All we're doing is substituting our, our answers in. Now, we can rewrite our original equation with x plus 2, x plus 1, Oh, we factorised it, equals zero. Okay, now from here, we can now solve for x using the technique we used in question nine, where, okay, we have on one side of an equal sign, we have some values, and we want it to be equal to zero. So if this whole bracket here happened to equal zero, well, then zero times this bracket will be zero, because zero times anything is zero. So, if x plus 2 equals 0, and I'm going to go straight to the second step. If this bracket were to equal 0, x plus 1 equals 0, our equation would work. And this means that x equals, we can minus 2 from both sides, and this one here, minus 1 from both sides. And there are our two solutions for x. So, just recapping here. We factorised from here to here using the Fox family method. And then we use that null factor law, where that's just a pretty much fancy way of saying that if we make the bracket equal to zero, we can end up finding the answer. And there we go. So if you want to try question two now, and remember question two is still using Fox family method to, to factorise. A little bit trickier because there's a number in front of the x squared. Have a go using the same technique and then I'll, I'll solve it now. Okay, this is a this is a little trickier of the Fox family when there's a coefficient that is not 1 in front of the x squared. But again, this seems like a pretty straightforward question. Let's factorise the top line and then use the null factor law and see if we can find some solutions. Okay, our a is 2, b is minus 11, and c is 12 using the coefficients here. Okay, we go... I've done this a million times. Box family method being passed down through generations. Okay. Well, A times C is 2 times 12, 24. 24, good. And B is negative 11. Okay. I need two numbers that multiply to give 24 and add to give negative 11. Now this is sometimes a little bit tricky, but I like to, if, if there's negative signs here, but I like to just use positive numbers first, and then see what we can do with the negative number in there. So well, I know that 8 times 3 is going to give me 24, and I know 8 and 3 are kind of linked to 11, so if we put negative signs in front of both of them, well they'll still multiply to give positive 24, but they will add to give negative 11. So we have our we have our two values there. And I'll squeeze it in here. But remember, if there's a coefficient in front of the x, we don't just put x now, we have to put whatever the coefficient is. 2. Now, x minus 8. And the same here. 2, x minus 3. Now, the last step with the Fox family method, if there's a number in front of the x squared, is you have to divide one of these brackets, which I'll just write here, 2x minus 8. 2x minus 3, you have to divide one of these brackets by a. Now you can choose which one, but usually one of them sticks out to be a little bit easier. And in this case, it's this one here, because this will, this will actually turn into, if we divide by 2, x minus 4. Okay, so now we have, we have 
quite quickly factorized a very hard quadratic to factorize into our, into our form. And then we know, using our null factor law, for this to be equal to zero, if x minus 4 was zero, or 2x minus 3 was zero, our solution would work. So we can get our answers as x equals add 4 to both sides. And here, it takes a little bit more steps, we can go put the 3 over, so 2x equals 3, and x will give us 3 divided by 2. And there are our two answers when we are trying to solve for x with these quadratic equations.